doesn't science have apologists? Some will say it does, pointing to folks like Carl Sagan, Richard Dawkins, or Neil deGrasse Tyson. But those people aren't apologists. They're promoters and educators. They, they merely explain science and the principles of science via sound argument and demonstration. An apologist is a person who is completely full of shit. Religious apologists, in particular those defending the holy books of the tribal war god of Abraham, are people who will do and say just about anything in order to square the circle and defend the indefensible. They are soulless hacks who will try to make you think that your well-reasoned argument is anything but. The weapons of the trade are deceit, obfuscation, confusion, a disheartening willingness and ability to take advantage of people's ignorance and fear, and an absolute shamelessness which would warrant utter disdain in any other profession. The main reason science doesn't have apologists is because the entire scientific endeavor is devoted to seeking the truth about our world and how things work within our world. And that work part is the key. Science is forever seeking actionable knowledge, by which I mean knowledge which, in the most extreme circumstances, is so reliable we can make accurate predictions regarding the causal relationships of natural phenomena to the point where we can even put our lives and the lives of those we love in what would otherwise be complete and utter jeopardy. This is often categorized under the general heading of science and technology. From the more immediately benign science of agriculture, which secures our food supply, to meteorology, which keeps us informed of dangerous weather patterns, to the mechanics of automobiles and airplanes and the engineering of bridges and electrical transmission systems, we routinely count on science and technology to safely provide us the benefits of what would otherwise be some very dangerous undertakings. Of course, these are some of the most extreme cases. Often we simply want to know something for the sake of knowing things. But for the most part, we do investigate attempting to acquire knowledge because over the course of history, we've come to understand that actually and truthfully knowing things is highly beneficial. Almost all knowledge is in some way actionable and able to make our lives and the world in general better. In science, honesty and truth are not just valuable and life enhancing, but often life saving. So dishonesty not only has no value, it actually has a negative value, setting us back and wasting our precious time, often putting us in danger. Dishonesty, however slight, will thwart the entire project, and people thus engaged know that. They also know that whatever dishonesty they propose will ultimately be discovered via the process of peer review, and that such willful deception will put an end to careers. But this is the case only because the other people so engaged are devoted to the scientific endeavor and the honesty required. This is not the case among religious apologists who pat each other on the back when some novel argument is made to bolster the faithful, often entirely devoid of honesty and or rational coherence. We dealt with one such case early in season three of Mr. Deity where apologists had argued that God's command to rid the world of new brides who couldn't demonstrate evidence of virtue was a function of God's deference to the local customs of the time. Right. An all-knowing, all-loving, transcendent being who knows that a woman's hymen can break prior to sexual intercourse just sits by in silence while women are senselessly murdered and now murdered in the name of that same transcendent being. Brilliant! The religions dedicated to the tribal war god of Abraham don't seek the truth. They presume to already have it. So any new information calling into question the truths they already embrace must be rejected and attacked. While any new information calling into question the provisional truths of science is investigated with genuine interest. If scientists are wrong about X, Y, or Z, discovering how and why gets them closer to the thing to which they've already devoted their entire lives. Truth and knowledge. Finding out you're wrong is actually a good thing when you're genuinely interested in the truth. When you prefer dogma instead, science and this age of discovery represent an endless state of war where your only weapon is a fully loaded sidearm of bullshit and in some very particular cases, the claw.